Good morning, friends. Thanks for tuning in once again to Knock EPC. Uh, may the Lord be with us now as we seek to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Uh, I wonder where you are just right now. Uh, are you still in the house, or maybe you've ventured even out uh, the back on this? Uh, well, it's giving uh, a, a sunny, uh, a sunny day. Let me ask you: What shoes are you wearing right now? You see, if this was a normal uh, Sunday, the answer would be simple enough. Well, I'm wearing my Sunday shoes. Uh, but it's not a normal Sunday. Uh, we haven't had a normal Sunday in quite some time now. Uh, you, you're not here in the church building. Uh, you're at home. And in all likelihood then, you're not wearing your Sunday shoes. Uh, you might be wearing your sandals with all this lovely weather. Or you might be wearing your favourite shoes, your most comfy shoes about the house. Or maybe you're just in your socks. Or maybe you're even in your bare feet. Even as I stand here in the pulpit, well, you can't tell just what shoes I'm wearing. I could be in my wellies, for all you know. But I'm not, by the way. Uh, But the right shoes are important. Um, Some of you may be venturing back to the golf course, so you've been putting on your golf shoes, little spikes all over uh, the sole. Uh, I know that some little groups of footballers are very soon to return to practice. It'll be time to get the football boots on again. Uh, Some of us, of course, have been out for walks uh, and we've put on kind of proper walking shoes to go uh, for, you know, a a longer distance. Of course, some of you may still just be in flip-flops around the house and that's what you love. Perhaps even some of you uh, would love to be back in your school shoes, uh, meeting with school friends again. But you get the point. Uh, We have different shoes for different occasions. The right footwear, it is often essential. And so it is with the armour of God here in Ephesians chapter 6. The armour includes shoes. They are essential. Uh, Without them, we are unprepared to stand against the schemes of the evil one. The devil, of course, he loves traps uh, and snares, obstacles in our way that we can hurt our feet on, spikes in the ground. Uh, That's what he's into. In this series, going through the armour, we've seen the importance of being aware of the devil's devices. Let's remind ourselves again, please, of the whole armour of God before we stop and consider the shoes we've been given. Let's read the scriptures, please. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 uh, and verses 10 to 17. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Well, the shoes are described in verse 15. Having your feet shown with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, It's clear, without these shoes on, we are unprepared without these shoes on we're not steady on our feet Uh, without these shoes on we can't go anywhere we need these shoes the shoes of the gospel to be ready to be steady and to go and so that's our three points uh, this morning nice and easy to remember if somebody asks you what was the sermon you heard on sunday morning or whenever you're listening to it Dead easy to remember. Ready, steady, go. Well, number one then, the gospel makes us ready. Makes us ready. Well, what is it? 
What is the gospel? Paul describes it here as the gospel of peace. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because his subject here is spiritual warfare. And we might imagine that our shoes would be the shoes of fury, or the shoes of advance, or the shoes of attack. But no, they're the shoes of peace. Shoes of the gospel of peace. We also need to remember who gives us the shoes. We need to remember that this is the armour of God. It is all from God. And the very first thing the gospel does is give us peace with God. Do you have these shoes? Do you have peace with God? Perhaps you've never really thought about that. Maybe you imagine, well, yeah, I mean, me and God, we're, we're in good terms, I'm sure. You might think that I've got no quarrel with God. I'm, I'm a pretty decent person. I imagine God probably happy enough with me too. But the Bible teaches us something very different about ourselves and God. Paul says in Romans chapter 1 verse 18 that the wrath of God is being revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. And he then goes on to teach that we are all ungodly and we are all unrighteous. Even the sort of relatively good people in the world. Even the very religious people in the world. In and of ourselves we are unrighteous. And we are unable to work up a righteousness by ourselves that would ever please the fully righteous God. Romans 3.23, it's very plain. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 5, uh, we sinners were described as without strength, ungodly, sinners, and enemies of God. And as long as we continue to reject God's gospel of peace, we will remain his enemies. We read in John 3 verse 36, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. The wrath of God abides on him. So if you haven't received the gospel of peace, then you're already condemned. If you don't have these gospel shoes, then the wrath of God abides on you. Without the gospel, the only place you're destined for is hell. And so it's no wonder that the very first words of Jesus' recorded ministry were, Repent! And believe the gospel. Without the gospel we're already defeated by the evil one. Without the gospel you're dead in sin. You're enslaved in sin. You're unable to break free by your own efforts. And it's the gospel of peace that you need more than anything else. Yes, your, your wardrobe, as it were, may be filled with all kinds of shoes for every occasion. But there is only one pair of shoes that enables you to stand on the day of judgment. And it's these shoes. The shoes of the gospel of peace. And the gospel is good news because it gives us peace with God. The gospel reconciles us to our maker and to the judge of all the earth. The good news is that God has sent his only begotten son into the world to take the wrath that you and I deserve. That wonderful first part of John 3.36. He who believes in the son has everlasting life. You see, Paul here, he's writing this uh, this letter to the church in Ephesus. He's, he's writing to those who have believed this message and they've turned to Jesus uh, and they have found in him forgiveness and pardon for all their sins. And now they're no longer enemies of God. He started by reminding them in chapter 1 verse 7 that they have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, 
according to the riches of his grace. In chapter 113, he reminds them that they have trusted in the gospel. And because of that, now they are saved from sin and death and hell. They've been given these gospel shoes. Now, because they believe that Jesus died for them, because they are trusting in him for salvation, they have peace with God. Paul makes it even more plain in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Only the Christian has the shoes of the gospel of peace. Only the Christian has a true peace with God because God has come to them and rescued them from the kingdom of darkness and brought them into his everlasting kingdom of light. Only the Christian then, with his gospel shoes, who is ready to fight on God's side. Because they believe the gospel, they're on God's side now. And God is for them now. And not against them any longer. Only the gospel makes us ready. Are you ready? Are you ready for heaven? Can you say, yes, I'm ready because Jesus has rescued me. He saved me. He now stands with me. Only Jesus can make you ready. And believer, you, have, you who have been given, given these wonderful shoes, are you now ready to stand? Are your shoes strapped on tight? You know, the shoes or the sandals of the Roman soldiers, they had lots of straps about them uh, and they held them tight upon the soldiers' feet. Uh, and, you know, we need to refresh ourselves in the fundamentals of the gospel over and over again to keep our gospel shoes firmly upon our feet. The more we are gripped by the goodness of the good news, then the more ready we will be to stand. So is your belief in the gospel sure and steadfast? Do you still believe that without Christ you are absolutely lost? Do you believe Jesus died for your sins and that now he has made you righteous in God's sight? Do you believe that Jesus is risen from the dead and he has all authority given unto him in heaven and on earth? Do you believe that God the Father and the Holy Spirit together have given you the Holy Spirit who now dwells in your heart? You see, the more we understand the fundamentals and the wonder of the gospel then the more ready we will be to live for Christ. The more ready we will be to communicate the message Jesus saves. Only the gospel makes us ready. Now the devil hates us, of course. He wants you to doubt the gospel. He wants you to lose sight of the gospel. He wants you to think, oh, I need to move on from the gospel into other things. But that's only because Satan hates the gospel. Because it was the gospel that took you out of his clutches, out of his kingdom, and reconciled you to God. How the devil hates the gospel. So believer, please, strap those gospel shoes on tighter and tighter. The more you are gripped by the gospel, more ready you will be to stand. The gospel makes us ready. Secondly, the gospel makes us steady. The sandals of a Roman soldier had special soles. They were impregnated with metal studs or, or nails. It meant they had superior traction. And when their enemies were slipping and sliding, they were able, because of their shoes, 
press home their advantage. They were made ready by their shoes and made steady by their shoes. And we have to admit it, don't we? You know, it's, it's not always easy to be a steady Christian. It's not easy. We need good shoes. And these gospel shoes, well, they are just the business. Now, already they give us peace with God. Now, that in and of itself brings a steadiness to our lives. That gives us a Romans 8, 28 steadiness. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. There's a steadiness there. We can be steady no matter what life throws our way. Be it disability or sickness or bereavement. Be it family troubles or financial worries or or job security. Be it the struggles that we have with indwelling sin and guilt. The the gospel of peace comes to us and assures us we are saved and that God has begun a work in us and he will surely complete that work. And that brings us steadiness. And so, believer, you're called to walk worthy of Jesus Christ, your Saviour and Lord. And so you need these shoes to keep you steady. Gospel shoes. See, the gospel directs our steps. Yes, let the gospel direct your career path. Let the gospel uh, direct you in your choice of friends. Let the gospel direct you in who you should marry. Let the gospel direct you in your business dealings. Let the gospel direct what you should do in retirement. Put Christ into the decisions that you make day in and day out. You're not a rogue soldier. You're under Christ. He's your commander in chief. Listen to him. Obey him. Walk where he wants you to walk. Walk the way he wants you to walk. Of course, the devil wants you to do otherwise. He wants you to stumble and fall. He wants to bring you down and devour you. And all he needs to do is really take you away from Christ. So so please be be mindful and, and watch out for his schemes. Ask yourself, will doing this thing bring me nearer to God? If I go to that place or hang out with those people... Will I be more tempted to sin? Will this course of action help me to be a steady Christian? We're commanded in 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, be ready in season and out of season. You see, that requires steadiness. And only the gospel keeps us steady. Living according to the gospel. That's what we're aiming for. That's our mission. And of course the devil would like you to think. Really? That's it? That's a terribly boring mission. The devil would have you believe that the Christian life is dull. And it's uneventful. And you're missing out on all the things that the world has to offer. I mean steady. It's not a word that shouts excitement at us is it? But consider the author of this letter to the Ephesians. I mean, Paul, he was a steady Christian. But take the time and read through the second half of the book of Acts. And you'll see that his life was very far from boring. Think of his missionary adventures. Think of the people he met. Think of the dangers he was caught up in. Steady does not equal boring. Read any number of Christian biographies and you'll see the very same thing. I mean, last Friday, the kids of the church, we were watching the life of Gladys Aylward on YouTube. Missionary to China. 
30 minute movie and it was gripping from start to finish uh, the previous Friday we watched Brother Andrew he was smuggling Bibles across the Iron Curtain or think even of some of the older folk in the congregation or, or in other congregations and they're still going steady with the Lord yeah take the time to ask them about their lives do a little investigating find that the Christian life it's the only life worth living these gospel shoes they're not bedroom slippers they're not a pair of loafers they are built for steadiness because the roads they trod on are anything but steady we could even go so far though to say that Although they're built for action, these shoes, they're still comfortable shoes. And by which I mean that they help us live in a a rocky, craggy world, uh, and yet our feet uh, do not tire. They do not wear out. Remember the Israelites? uh, They've been delivered uh, from slavery in Egypt, and they wander then because of their Uh, complaining because of their sin they wander in the wilderness for 40 years but still the grace of God is with them and we're told in Deuteronomy 8 verse 4 that their garments did not wear out nor did their feet swell gospel shoes that's the way it is with them they never wear out the gospel is always new it is good news And they don't just give us steadiness as individuals. They are essential for steadiness as a congregation of God's people. It is the gospel that prevents us from being tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Paul warned against that in Ephesians 4 verse 14. No, it is our shared gospel foundation that keeps us steady together. Listen to Paul in these wonderful verses from Colossians 3, 12 to 14. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. You see, yes, we're different from one another in lots of ways. But when we remember these gospel truths that each one of us is chosen by God, that we are forgiven by Christ, then we can love one another. Even though I might say the wrong thing, even though I might take someone the wrong way, I can still say, you're my brother, you're my sister in Christ. You are God's chosen. You are God's child. And both you and me, we have this in common. We are both forgiven by Christ. He died for our sins. And that gives us true steadiness. See, yes, the devil, he would love to have us uh, falling out about lots of things. He would love to have us fall out about the easing of lockdown. Oh, I don't think so yet. Oh, I think we need to get out of it. All kinds of opinions, isn't there? He would love to have us bickering and fighting against one another about the things we've maybe put on Facebook. He'd love to make, you know, one of us stumble uh, so that the rest of us then would kind of condemn that person and castigate that person. But these gospel shoes, they are impregnated with the grace of God. We love one another now with that love of Christ in the gospel. The gospel 
makes us steady. Thirdly and finally, the gospel makes us go. These boots are made for walking. Uh, some say that you know the armour it's only for defence. But when it comes to the gospel, the best form of defence is offence. After all, the gospel is a message. It's a message. Uh, and Paul, he's writing in the days before email and FaceTime and WhatsApp and Facebook and all these other things. You know, if a message was to go forth, well, someone had to go. Someone had to run with it. And really, the message here is that we must proclaim the gospel in as many places as possible. It's simple, isn't it? Why? Why must we proclaim the gospel far and wide? Because people who do not receive and believe the gospel go to hell. There's no other way to be saved. One way, God said, to get to heaven. Jesus is the only way. But they need to hear of that way. They need to hear the message. As Paul said in Romans 10, 13 to 15. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Are your feet beautiful? I mean, our feet aren't, are they? They're not really. I mean, our feet are kind of bumpy, knobbly things. And the older you get, well, I'm not going into detail. But shoes make a difference, don't they? I mean, I think we quite often comment upon one another's shoes. Oh, I, I like your shoes. Oh, I like your new sandals. I love your trainers. They look awesome. Or those hiking boots. Wow, how much did they cost? But there's nothing more beautiful than these gospel shoes. The gospel is the best news that a person can hear. Uh, you know, in a, in a world of bad news, the gospel shoes, they are strikingly brilliant. Even at first glance, they, they might be too brilliant. Because the gospel starts by telling you, you're a terrible sinner. You're condemned. You're under the just judgment of the holy God of heaven. Then the gospel goes on and tells the story of Christ coming into the world to save sinners. Tells of one who died in your place, willingly taking all your sin upon himself on the cross. It tells of one whom you can go to and flee to for refuge. One who invites you to come to him and find true forgiveness and, and, and peace with God. You see, the gospel, the gospel is, is made to be told. Just as boots were made for walking, the gospel is made for talking. The gospel makes us go and tell. It's not just a defense. It is offense. Because it advances into enemy territory and it rescues sinners from the enemy. You know, the gospel is not some great crusade for domination. No, it's a, it's a saving mission of redemption. And the more we understand the gospel, then the more we will tell others of Jesus. He's the one who can save you. It's a beautiful saving message. And yet it is one that sinners instinctively hate. No one wants to hear they're a sinner going to hell. But it's a message they need to hear and respond to. 
And the wonderful thing is, as we preach the gospel, as we tell others the good news of Jesus, God himself, through his Holy Spirit, opens the eyes of sinners that they may see the beauty of the gospel. That they will see the saving power and the love of Christ. That they will see their need of him. And he saves. He saves to the uttermost those who come unto him. Believer, go and tell. Satan doesn't want you to go and tell. He wants you to shut up. He wants you to be quiet. He will tempt you to delay. Oh yes, yeah, I, I should tell my neighbours. I should definitely do that. But you know, tomorrow's soon enough. Or, or the next day. Or, or when church opens up again and things become it's a bit more normal. Yet yeah, later it is always good in the devil's book. Delay, it's one of his favourite strategies. What should you do? Look again at your feet. Look at the gospel. Look how good it is. Look how urgent it is. Look how much sinners need this message. Go and tell. Or the evil one might tempt you to dilute the gospel. Tell them about the love of Jesus. But don't talk about the cross. Uh, don't talk about sin and judgment. I mean, that might put people off. And even when we do share the gospel with friends and family and neighbours, the devil, he, he never stops. He's always trying to bring uh, our work of sharing the gospel, that sowing the good seed. He's always trying to bring that to nothing. Remember the parable of the sower that Jesus told the devil he would come and snatch away the message. They'd be distracted by other things. He also turned people away from the gospel as soon as he faced any criticism for being a Christian. And he made the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this world overcrowd the gospel so that eventually people would just turn their backs on Christ and walk away again from him. But I trust you remember there was always good ground. There was good ground in the parable and we must remember that the gospel will bear fruit if we are faithfully preaching it and praying for God to come and save sinners. And praise God, he is still saving sinners. So go and tell. The gospel makes us go. So get your gospel shoes on. Know the gospel. Believe the gospel. Understand the gospel more deeply. Love the gospel. Be entirely gripped and captivated by the gospel. Because only then will you be ready and only then will you be steady. And only then will you go. Amen. Let's pray about it, please. O oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gospel that gives us peace with God. And Lord, I pray for perhaps those watching today and they're not yet saved. And I pray, Lord, that you would open their hearts and minds, that they would see the wonder of Jesus and their urgent need of him. And they would fly to Jesus, and find in him forgiveness and pardon and wonderful love which never, ever ends. Lord, make it so. We thank you, Jesus saves. And Lord God, we pray for ourselves as believers, Help us, Father, to know your gospel better. Help us, Lord, to know your Saviour, the Lord Jesus, better. To know his love and care every day in our lives. Help us, Lord, to understand what is the, the length and the breadth and the height and depth of Christ's love. That we would be gripped by his love. That it would make us steady. And, Lord, that it would make us go. Please forgive us for our delay. 
Please forgive us, Lord, for oft times we are quiet when we ought to speak. Lord, I pray, help us to know the joy of walking worthy in these gospel shoes. Father, we pray, keep them tight upon our feet, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.